Right, so in the last video, we introduced the idea of Green's theorem. Now, Green's theorem allowed us to relate an integral, um, a line integral over a closed boundary of a domain of FDR to some double integral over a domain um, of partial derivatives. So we had partial, um, partial Q, partial X, minus partial P, partial y with respect to a differential area d squared x. So first of all, my notation of d squared x is something that's seen in more advanced um, courses. You might start to see it soon, um, but this just means dA. And if you see d3x, then that's dV. And then if you see dN of x, then that's some nth dimensional differential um, unit. Okay, anyways, we talked about Green's theorem. We did a simple example. Now I'd like to do a more complicated example, more proof-based example, that should give us a little bit more of an idea of how to deal with Green's theorem and why it's useful, although I'd imagine that's fairly self-explanatory from the last video. And then we can start moving on to more relevant topics for the next part of our unit. So for this example, I would like to consider some vector function f such that f is equal to 1 over x squared plus y squared times negative yx. So I would like us to show, or prove really, that any closed integral over a domain, boundary of a domain of fdr, is equal to 2 pi for all paths that cross the origin for this given vector function. So essentially what I'm saying is if I give you any path that is um, piecewise smooth, I take its line integral, take any boundary of D, and it surrounds the origin. So it could be that path, it could be a circle, it could be this guy, it could be whatever I want. Um, it will be equal to 2 pi. Okay, so what I would like to start with is consider a clockwise circle C or a counterclockwise circle C with a radius a, so that this um, c prime curve is arbitrarily small and is inside whatever other curve we're dealing with. So let's say that this is our curve c prime, and this is our curve c. So we're, we, we're going to choose um, a, it, the radius here, to be a. And a is going to be small, such that we can take a limit so that if a goes to zero, we still know that it's 2 pi and it's smaller than all the other curves. Anyways, um, what we would want to consider now is the total boundary. Now the total boundary of this domain now um, here, and it has a little hole in it, but that's okay. The total boundary of this domain here is going to be the union of c with negative c prime, okay? So now what we can do is we can look at the line integrals, right? So you can use Green's theorem to evaluate both of these. So if I want to find the line integral over C, then that's going to be um, the, in, the double integral of, um, the, the cro of, the cross, of the cross derivatives. Uh, sorry, this should be an equal sign, not a that should be a plus sign, not an equal sign, and we should be going over negative. Okay, so anyways, if I add both of these line integrals, if I add both of these line integrals, then I can use Green's theorem, right? So if I come out with some sort of closed um, domain, I will be able to use Green's theorem. So if I add them, I can use Green's theorem. So now let's actually perform this integral. Let's see what we get when we take the double integral. We're given the vector function. So we can take partial derivatives. We get the double integral over the domain of y squared minus x squared over x squared plus y squared quantity squared minus y squared minus x squared over x squared plus y squared quantity squared. Well, guess what? Both of them go to zero, or both of them will cancel each other and go to zero. So that means that it doesn't even matter what double integral we have. So that means we have this double integral being equal to zero. Now what this entails, if I have the integral over c, and then I'm adding the integral over c prime, that's equal to zero, um, or the, sorry, the integral over negative c prime, 
Well, then what does that imply? That implies that the integral over c is equal to the integral over c prime. So what we proved is we've proven that if I have this one line integral, I have this other line integral, I can um, integrate them and get the same thing. So now what we're actually going to do is we're going to prove this. So we chose a to we chose our closed curve c prime to be a small circle going counterclockwise with some radius a. Luckily for us, um, if we know how to do that, then we know how to do this. So what we are going to do is we are going to choose a parameterization. I'm thinking a r of t equals um, I don't know sine of or cosine of theta. Um, hat x or a cosine theta hat x plus a sine theta hat y. Okay, we're actually going to use t instead of theta, but you know the gist here. Um, if I take the line integral um, over this guy here and I use our formula, theta obviously goes from 0 to 2 pi around the full circle. If I take f of r of t dotted with r prime of t, well then what we're going to get is we're going to get the in, just the integral from 0 to 2 pi of dt. And you can perform all of this out, it's just some algebra that you need to do um, because this is fairly simple, taking the derivative vector function and reformulating whatever parameterization we have r of t into the vector function is fairly simple. Anyways, it ends up just getting the integral between 0 and 2 pi of dt, which is just 2 pi. Okay, so that is the proof that any kind of paths going around the origin with that vector function is going to be equal to 2 pi. Does that make sense? All right, so thank you for watching today's video. Um, in the next one, I plan on moving over to the vector derivatives, um, divergence and curl. We'll talk about divergence first, and then we'll talk about curl. We'll talk about some surface parameterization. So we talked about line parameterizations and like curve parameterizations. We need to talk about surface parameterizations. Then we can talk about surface integrals and then the fundamental um, theorem for curls and the fundamental theorem for divergences, also known as Stokes' theorem, and the divergence theorem, a.k.a. Gauss's theorem. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.